What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Nasty Nate channel. Thanks for stopping in today. I've had a couple questions on how to install a DSP5 switch. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that on an LBZ Duramax, just like the one right behind me. So this particular application is a 2006 LBZ Duramax. I know it's pretty much the same on an LMM. The rest of the Duramaxes, uh, you're going to have to research a little bit. I'm not sure if it's the same or not, but uh, it can't be that much different, so just stay tuned guys and you're going to see exactly how it's done. Something you want to know first is a DSP5 switch is going to run your EFI Live tune, so if you want EFI Live, you need a DSP5 switch. So if you plan on running EFI Live, plan on installing this, or at least having a shop do this if you're not comfortable with doing this, but let's get right into this and show you exactly how it's done on an LBZ truck. So on my truck, I've already got the switch installed. It's actually in this little cubby hole in the middle of the dash. But what you're gonna wanna do is run the wires. You get like a, a 10 foot wire. It's got a black and a red cable. You're gonna run that through the firewall from the inside first. So the switch is on the inside of the truck and you just have the open wires running through the firewall. You can see that right here. Um, let me try to get the camera in there. It's this gray wire right above my finger. I just put a new hole in one of the rubber grommets and fed that through. You can kind of see I have it zip tied right here and I have it zip tied down here. That's all you really need in the engine bay. You only need a couple feet to work with. And then once you get that through the firewall, they come over here on the driver's side and this I believe is your trans ECU or TCM and then this is the ECU to your truck so you need to take out all these wires and to do that you need to take out the bottom one first there's actually two connectors this is one and then this is one down here we need to take the bottom one out to get to the top one Once you flip the lever on the bottom, you can pull that connector out. I'm just gonna let it hang. It's a lot easier to see how to undo the connector on the top one, so just watch this, and you'll have to do the same on the bottom first. You're gonna pull this towards the firewall of the truck and just push it down. You can kind of see it's releasing this. And we're just going to go about right there, see if it's loose. You have to push it up almost 180 degrees. You can see this thing right here has to flip from where my first finger is all the way back to here and able to pull it off. So once you have your connector off the ECU, you're going to rotate this lever back to the locked position and then we have to pry off these clips there's one on a couple on each side we have to pry off this top piece i'm going to use a flathead screwdriver just a really small one it's like an electronic screwdriver you could probably use a pick too but i'm going to use this and we should just be able to pop this off Just like that it's pretty easy the clips don't hold hold very well so just watch that um, they're probably pretty fragile if you own a 12 year old truck just like this so be careful on that but it's pretty easy just to pull that thing off so the first thing you need to do when you undo the connector from the ECU and then take off the the cap on the very top you have to take off this purple pin right here. This pin slides all the way through. You can see in the center, it slides all the way through. It locks all of those pins in. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your screwdriver, your flathead screwdriver, and just pry it out like this. Just pry it out with a screwdriver. It's, it should come out pretty easy, and then you'll just pull it out with your hand. And then once you get that out, be really careful. Don't start tugging on these wires because all of these wires are loose. I mean, they kind of stay in there, but 
you don't want to start pulling on these wires and start pulling them out of the, the correct holes because you're going to have a nightmare when you do that. So watch out for that. Once you get that purple connector out, I'm not going to do it because I've already done this. So it, it's really easy to do. Just pull that purple, just pull that purple connector out and you'll be able to get to, you'll be able to get the DSP-5 pins in. And I'm going to set this down so we can show you with the screwdriver. So the red wire from your DSP-5 switch is going to go into the second row on your connector. It's next to a blue wire. It goes blue wire, gray wire, then there's an empty spot. You're going to put the red wire from your DSP-5 switch in the third hole on the connector. You're just going to push the pin all the way down until you can't push it in any further. That's going to be seated. And then your black wire from your DSP-5 switch is going to be in this third row where this yellow wire is on the ECU connector. And you're going to follow that all the way down. Probably about three quarters of the way down there's going to be a gray wire. There's going to be an empty spot. And then there's going to be a black and yellow striped wire. That black wire from your DSP-5 switch is going to go in that empty spot in between the gray wire and the yellow and black striped wire. Once you get those two in, you're going to push this purple pin back in. You're, you're going to have it completely out of this connector. It's going to be two separate pieces. You're going to put that purple pin back in. It's going to push all the way in and you should be able to tug on these wires just like this. See, you cannot move this red wire out. You shouldn't be able to move any of these out. If you can move any of those out, your pins are not all the way seated. All right, once you get your wires in, you should probably zip tie all of them to the connector. There's actually a hole right here for a zip tie to go around, so I would recommend doing that. And then maybe another zip tie just in case. That's what I did. You're just gonna fit all these wires under this cover right here. This will just snap right back into place, just like that. You should be able to rotate this arm up and this piece should move. If that doesn't move, you've got it on wrong. So that's the only way it's gonna install back into your ECU. So let's do that first. We have to install the top one first and then we can install the bottom one and you're ready to go. All right, once you have the top cover piece back on, you can feed it back down to your ECU. It's kind of hard with one hand here. You're going to push this on as far as you can. And then we'll lift that lever back up. And that will lock it onto your ECU. And it won't be able to come back off. Once it snaps in, you're ready to go. Make sure you install the bottom one and you're ready to install your EFI Live Tunes. Once you have the connectors installed back on the ECU, just make sure you zip tie your wire for the DSP-5 switch to a couple wires in the engine bay so it's not just flopping around. Make sure it's ran through the correct spot before you do all that. It'll come out. It's pretty dark, but the gray wire in this shot is where it's coming through. And then I have it ran up in the center of the dash in this little cubby hole, and that's where your switch is gonna be. That's pretty easy to install. Now you're gonna wanna install the DSP-5 switch before you download your EFI Live tunes to your truck. So once that's installed, you're ready to install your Moonshine Tunes, which is what I run. They are badass tunes. In no way is this a Ridge Runner Diesel Performance sponsored video or anything like that. I would just highly recommend their tunes. They are some badass tunes and I've been running them for six months pretty hard and my truck has ran really well. Um, other than that, it comes with instructions exactly how to install the tunes when you plug this into your truck with the provided wires. Just goes into your OBD2. It's really easy. You turn your truck to the on position. Don't start it. You go through some buttons on here and uh, it installs the tunes and then 
pretty much good to go. I think it takes about 10 minutes to load them up or something like that. It also comes with an instruction sheet on how to install a DSP-5 switch, which is actually like kind of the worst instructions I've ever seen. Hopefully this video was pretty informative for you guys that don't know how to install a DSP-5 switch. It should be pretty easy. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe to Nasty Nate and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks guys.